so here's the testing that we do. This is the, the bare minimum to, uh, to truly regulate your system. If we don't do some of this, we miss something, you know, potentially. And then again, you're spinning your tires. You're not getting the results that you want. So we start with the basics of di medical diagnosis, and that's your CMP14, CBC, and lipid panel. And I do a lot of records reviews, and I'll talk about you know the process of becoming a patient at our office. Um, step one being the records review, and I'll notice that uh, somebody seeing a, a physician for a very chronic and, and stressful and um, you know, it's something that affects the person uh, quite extensively, and they run this CMP14, CBC, and lipid panel, and then send them out the door. And then a year later, they come back, and the, the problems are worse, and the, the, the suffering is worse. And what do they do? They run a CMP14, a CBC, and a lipid panel again. You're not going to get to a greater degree of understanding by asking the same questions that you asked previously. You have to ask deeper questions. So it is important that we get our basics, and we have this uh, cover. And what this covers is your general organ stress, immune stress, um, fat, sugar, protein, metabolism, and vitamins and minerals. So it is important that we have that. But many times, nothing shows up because it's just a, a real basic screening of, of your health. We also need to look at a full thyroid panel. Many times a TSH will be thrown into this general panel, um, which is a, a pituitary marker for uh, stimulating thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, and, you know, you probably know how medical diagnosis goes on this. The TSH is high, they give Synthroid, and uh, they say your thyroid isn't producing, and we're just going to, you know, provide it for it. But there's a lot of things. Um, there's dozens of things that can go wrong with your metabolic process, and that's what I think of when I talk about thyroid is this is your metabolism. And I'm not talking about just how skinny or how much fat you're gaining talking about energy processing, how your body is pr processing energy, making energy efficiently. So the TSH is what the pituitary is suggesting, how quickly uh, it's asking the, the thyroid to move. The, the T4 is the output, what, what has happened in the thyroid. And the T3, so we need all these numbers, is the conversion of T4 into an active hormone that affects cellular metabolism, cellular energy production. And you can get mixed up in between here, and you could get mixed up in between here, so you have to have all these numbers. And if you're mixed up here, you might have a normal TSH, and you miss it completely if that's all you run. So we have to have what is going on metabolically in your system via the thyroid panel. We also have to have what's going on inflammatory-wise. Um, if your system is inflamed, that means that you have hormones in your blood that are signaling to your central processing, your central nervous system, that it's sick. Now, you may not be sick. It could be from the types of fats that you're eating. It could be from um, some other type of immune activation. Uh, it could be from liver congestion or gallbladder congestion and digestive inflammation. Um, so you may not have the typical symptoms of of uh, sickness, but your your body doesn't see it any differently. You're, if you have high sensitivity C-reactive protein elevations or homocysteine elevations, you're getting the central signal that you're sick, and it's going to shut down your metabolism. It's going to change your adrenal stress hormones because your body's going to be reacting in a survival mode. And the only way to know that is because um, there's no definite like, oh, if you have right foot pain, we know that your high sensitivity C-reactive protein is high. No, it doesn't work that way. You could have no indication that these levels are high um, other than the development of a chronic condition. So we have to uh, test these markers in order to know if it's something that is impacting your total health. So just a word on the functional ranges. Lab ranges, when we get a lab core or quest test back, it has a little range and it'll flag you if you're outside of those ranges. 
So those ranges are based on averages of testing. So let's say we're looking at a TSH range. If there were a million people tested for TSH last year, and those are what the averages of testing were based on, what are the chances that those million people were healthy, ideal examples? Those tests are run because those people are struggling with their health. So we're taking an average of sick people. So you certainly don't, don't want to be in that average. You want to fall within the functional or optimal ranges. And I'll just give you an example. These are really your healthy ranges. So this is how we diagnose that gap in between good health, good function, and um, disease process. So T4, this is the lab range, 4.5 to 12.5. So if you're 4.0, you qualify for a label. You qualify for hypothyroidism. Still doesn't tell you why you have that, but let's say you're at a 6.2, you are told you're fine. But when we look at the functional ranges, we would say, hmm, your metabolism is not what a healthy person's metabolism would be. So we need to look into that in greater detail and figure out how we get that back up into an ideal range. Because you take uh, several functional problems. So you take low metabolic rate, um, inflammation, uh, you know, gallbladder congestion, a put those together in one internal environment and you're going to end up with a problem. So we have to diagnose that way. We have to diagnose the gaps. 